Welcome to Weld.com, another, another MIG Monday series here. I need a little help, folks. Need a little help here. A while back in our classes, we did some, uh, some aluminum work <clears throat> on a spool gun. Now, I've read some comments over the, over the web, and some people don't like spool guns, and I actually think they're kind of cool when you get past the cumbersome part. Yeah, they're a little different. There's a little weight, cable, spool. A little tougher to manipulate other than a regular MIG gun, but I'm telling you, you want to save some time on some long seams. Uh, I find it more beneficial than TIG, although you know, obviously you make TIG look a lot better, but for doing long seams and stuff, <clears throat> you can really put some material down and get some stuff welded. Now here's the problem that I see. We did a little sample a long time ago, and I've, I've lost my etch here. I kept my polish, but one of these is clearly a push. And to my understanding, that's how you should weld aluminum. You get more of a, of a cup and a, a concavity in the weld. And then over here, we did a small pull. Both of them look to be acceptable. However, when we cut this and we polished it, I noticed minor amounts of porosity on the pull side and nothing over here on the push side. It's that cleaning action of argon. You keep your wire pointed forward just a little bit. So, you know, here I've got a question. Let's say that I'm wanting to mock up and build a toolbox out of aluminum diamond plate. This happens to be 3 16 which would be a good stout material to, to build it out of. But we've got outside corners you weld them uphill, downhill, you know, what do you, how are you going to treat that gun angle? I did one here a while ago. I think I was at 21 volts, 380 on the wire feed speed. And I went over and I cut and polished it a little bit with the die grinder and the 3M wheel. This little rascal here gave it a nice light buff here. And I don't see any porosity. You know, the weld was kind of black. And by the way, I've seen some horrible looking welds on toolboxes. I don't know where they're coming from, but somebody needs to learn how to weld. And looks like I do too. Now this, I mean, this will work, a little round. Again, to me, I'm not an expert at spool guns. I, I mean, I'll just openly admit that. <clears throat> I don't make them look near as pretty as, um, as TIG, obviously. But, you know, I think a lot of that is understanding settings single multiple pass welds so let's uh let me get my gear on and we'll play around with some settings here again we're going to we're going to be running on the spool gun we've got a, a esob rebel 235 ic i do have this set on the uh aluminum setting manual i've got 035 4043 pure argon about 30 cubic feet per hour so let me go find my sleeves and my safety glasses. I'll be right back. Okay, first one we're gonna try is uh, 21 volts, 380 on the wire speed. Uh, I've got this tilted up so you can see it, but I'm gonna try to be right over the top of it and kind of push down, if that makes sense. All right, here we go. Got a little bit of black showing. Got a little crackle on the way down, but I'll give that a nice little bath right there, just a light bath. And all that black comes off. Kind of reminds me of the. Kind of reminds me of the helium uh, TIG weld we did recently, the DC TIG weld. Anyway, you know, I find this to be acceptable. I'm sure if I went and cut it, we show a little bit of melt on the inside, but that's not what I was trying to do. By the way, 
if I clean this up a little bit, let's say that I needed to weld both sides of this. Okay, at that value, that 21 and 380, that's preheated material. And I'm gonna push this in here. I would say that I'd probably get a decent weld out of it. I'm hoping. Kind of the same thing as far as uh, color. Just a little black around it. A couple of things to be mindful of here. Um, you know, that laid down pretty good. And I'm one to do a little stitch. Uh, what I was gonna call out is and I've always had this happen to me, and I, there are some settings on some advanced machines of, of uh, crater fill and that kind of stuff. Take an eye of that right there. I always try to fill that crater up a little bit, and sometimes I'll dash it several times. But I've noticed when I've been doing spool gun work, you know, I try to terminate a weld, I come all the way out to the end, I try to pull back through it. All that heat is transferred out there, so it's almost like I gotta let it cool off, maybe come in here and touch that, but I can tell you that that hole, that fish eye in there is not cool. I'm sure most of you have seen this that have looked at good looking wells like on trailers and stuff. You'll see a nice looking well about eight or 10 inches long have a crack running right through the middle of it. And it starts right there. You get that, especially on a trailer or something that has vibration and cyclical loading or something. And then, you know, once that starts, if it ever cracks, it just propagates right through the weld. So I like to fill those in. Uh, and I've seen it, I've seen a lot of them fail. I try not to leave them behind. It's like I've got to go back over them somehow, dash them back in with MIG or something and fill that crater up. So again, we've got an outside joint, an outside corner joint that we did first. And then we turned it over and did an inside fillet. So this thing is pretty well sealed up. Uh, next thing I wanna do is, is probably do a couple of, uh, well, let's experiment. A minute ago we did a down, or uh, downhill, we did an outside corner joint and I kind of, I was kind of pushing it downhill a little bit. This one I want I just want to do this flat and it's kind of a weird weld. It's kind of a, oh, I don't know what you call that, little, little fillet weld. And I just want to do this one flat and then I want to experiment. And instead of running downhill, I want to drop the values and see if I can hit this and just go uphill with it. Probably about 45 degrees. Let's see what happens. Again, I'm experimenting with this. This is the first time running this particular machine and this spool gun. I've run other spool guns in the past. <clears throat> I'm gonna save a little bit of that and I'm gonna get rid of some of this wire feed speed and see what happens with that sound, get rid of that crackle. I'm gonna stay at 21 volts. I'm gonna go down to 350 and I'm gonna come back toward me. Well, it started out nice and quiet and it still crackled. And I was adding a wire angle as I went across. So I kind of like that second part where we dropped the wire feed speed, left the voltage alone. Now here's another deal for you. I'm throwing heat into this thing. So 
you know, I need to take that into consideration as far as my values. I've seen some people weld aluminum and uh, absolutely cook it. All right, now I've got this rascal sitting in front of me and I want to see what's going to happen here. I don't want to blow this up, but, you know, on the other hand, I don't want to weld it downhill. I mean, I could. I just want to experiment and see what's going to happen uphill in this particular type of joint here. So, let's go down in both just to see what happens. So I'm at 21, and this is getting on down there. I'm gonna go all the way down to 19, and my wire feed speed is on the underneath side of this, and it's super sensitive. Let's go down to 300 and see what happens. Okay, so now, now I do have kind of a, a push angle automatically built into what I'm doing here for this joint configuration. Let's see how this run goes. It sounds weird. I don't mind it so much. I don't, I don't like that fluttering. I can see that it's getting in there and it's fine for that joint configuration, but now I want to go up a half a volt. That or I want to go back to 21. Let's go back to 20. I'll go to 20 and I'll leave the wire feed speed alone, see if we can't get rid of this. I just want that little hiss in there. I actually like that a little better. I realize it's still popping somewhat. Hey, these are short welds, but I'm, I'm, I'm remembering these values. I didn't like that first one. Did not like that first one. It's too cold and splattery. Second one wasn't bad, but it started to pop a little bit. This last one started to get a little wide up here, but, and that's because this heat's racing up through here. If I had to just go back and look at this, I'd probably take the second one. You know, if I couldn't position my work all the time, we have the option of doing this downhill thing or we could hit the numbers going uphill. We could do this flat thing. Again, be open-minded to values and value changes, uh, heat input and all that kind of stuff. Speaking of heat input, check this out. I got a hog of a piece of material here that I found, half inch thick. I went ahead and put a weld in it just to see what it was gonna do, super cold. And it was, kind of, it was kind of cold. You gotta really crank stuff up. So the options, if I had to do thick aluminum with a spool gun, I'm probably gonna go high in volts, wire feed speed, but I'm also, I would think about doing a mild preheat. A couple hundred degrees would help. So let's, uh, let's experiment with this. I'm going to go up in values. I'm going to go to about, oh, what do you think? 25.5 and 5.75, get a little frisky here. Let's do it. Oh, let's go 26. I'm already sweating. We might as well go to 26, don't you think? And 635 inches a minute. And I'm going to put two more passes in here in this fillet weld. I'm going to put another weld in. I'm going to say, I'll bet you this lays in there a lot better. Big old hefty chunk of aluminum here that was cold. And it had, a, it had a weld in it that I did earlier just to kind of play around and get close. But then I went back and put two more passes in here. 
26 volts. Remember when we did this outside corner, we were like 21 volts and 300 on the wire feed speed, 280, 300. And now uh, we cranked her up because we've got some thick mass. We're in a fillet weld. We're trying to lay some material down. 26 volts, 644 inches a minute. One thing I notice about spool guns, and I don't care the brand, I, you know, I'm not picking on a brand or anything. I've used a bunch of different spool guns. It's like they all chatter. It's, it's, I've never, you know, it's like they get a little vibration in them, you know, especially at, golly, 644 inches a minute. This wire's coming out of here pretty good. So, you know, they're a little cumbersome. Get around that because if you're doing production work, uh, spool gun to me is the way to go. If you can get some uh, good procedures going, especially on a machine like this, uh, I wouldn't be afraid of fabricating some stuff. I'm sure old camera buddy over here got this and I know I dashed that a couple of times because a minute ago when we did a demo here, one of these welds, I left a big old crater. Well, I went ahead and hit this like three times and I filled it up and it came out of it nicely. So I would be, uh, I would be much more happier for that for me. I'd, I'd do that all day long and I'd consider it finished and okay. Got a few dingleberries around here. So I hope this helps. You know, again, I, somebody help me out here. You know, I'm, I'm kind of confused on this downhill. Do you do that normally on outside corners? Do you try to push them downhill? Do you go uphill? Uh, I've done about all of it. To me, to me, this straight downhill thing would be okay for my work if I was doing a toolbox for the back of the truck or, or a utility box or something. I also like this flat weld that we did. I thought we hit the numbers on it. A little confused on this uphill part, but if I did a bunch of it, you know, the whole demonstration is the capabilities of a spool gun, pure argon, uh, Rebel 235. I mean, hook and book, you can get some stuff done. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching weld.com. Please subscribe to the videos. Thank you. That's a welding term, by the way. Dingleberry. dingleberry. Yeah, dingleberry is a welding term. You bet. It's also a uh, f***ing term. Yeah, true. True. You should have had your Cheerios this morning. We might figure out how to build some cool stuff there, camera guy. Toolbox, gun cabinet. How about a gun cabinet? That'd be a little easy to get into. Gun cabinet out of aluminum? It won't be easy to get into when I hook it up to 230 volt, ungrounded. <laughs>